How's it going guys? Matt with Motorworks here. And in the video today, we are gonna be going over all the things you need to do to get your car ready for a dyno run. All right, now before any time I go on the dyno, whether I'm trying to make power or just see where the power level's at, I like to go over the car and just give it kind of a, we'll call it a health check and also make sure that it is ready to go on the dyno because when you put your car on a dyno, you're kind of putting it under quite a bit of stress and load beyond what you normally put your car through on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, this is going to see high RPM for a pretty extended amount of time. It's not it's not crazy, but it will be up there, and, and it is always scary when you put your vehicle on a dyno. So these are the things I like to do to get the car actually ready to go. Now, a <clears throat> couple of things you do right away. Uh, just make sure that your car isn't making any strange noises when you start it up or when you drive it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if you hear any type of funny noises, I would figure out what that noise is before I run it on a dyno because if it's something that could uh, potentially fail and cause destruction to your engine, you want to get that fixed before you put it on a dyno. Uh, like I said, the dyno is going to put an engine through its paces, so make sure that the engine sounds healthy. In addition to the engine, you also want to make sure that your transmission and driveline components aren't rattling, making any funny sounds, uh, feel loose, meaning there's not no harsh banging or clunking coming from the transmission when you drive the car. Uh, you want to just make sure that none of that's going on because, again, that stuff could fail on a dyno and it could be uh, devastating if it does. So this car, the engine sounds nice and smooth in here, the transmission, I'm not experiencing any type of issues there and I recently serviced the rear differential. Uh, another note, uh, when you're getting this thing ready to go, you want to check your fluids, at least visually inspect them. Now, I just changed the oil in this car. Uh, less than a thousand miles ago so all I had to do really is just check to make sure that the oil level looks good which it does uh, the transmission on the Chrysler 300 it's not something you can just check you just can't check the transmission fluid level without a special dipstick or taking it to the dealership now if you're unsure about your transmission if you don't know when the last time it was changed or serviced I highly recommend getting it serviced uh, before you run on a dyno uh, it's just peace of mind. In my case, I know when I last serviced it, so it's not leaking currently. So I know that all the fluid I put in there is is still there. So you know, I know my transmission's fine there. And like I said, the differential, you know, that I just recently changed that as well. So those are the things you want to do uh, to the engine. Now, when you're in here in the engine bay, looking everything over, listening to the engine, it's a good time to check your hoses, make sure you don't see any hoses with any splits or cracks in them. You also want to smell the engine bay to see if you smell any gasoline vapors. Uh, that could be a sign of a potential fuel leak, which you know that you're definitely going to want to get that addressed before you run on a dyno. Actually, you're going to want to get that addressed right away if you do smell any type of raw gasoline in the engine bay. <clears throat> you also want to check your air filter. Now, I checked this one, but I just installed this. Uh, if you watched the install video, I did that less than a thousand miles ago. Uh, again, I did pretty major service, uh, not just recently. So I know my air filter is good. Uh, the exhaust I know is good because, again, I just installed that, you know, very recently. The only other thing that I want to do, and this is for my peace of mind, is I want to check the spark plugs. Now, on any other car, I would say just get a new set of spark plugs. On these newer style Hemi engines, it's not that simple. There's 16 spark plugs. There's two spark plugs per cylinder, eight cylinders equals a lot of money in spark plugs. Now I recently changed these spark plugs within the last 20 to 30,000 miles so they should still be in good condition but 
for peace of mind, at least for myself, I would like to just take them out, inspect them, see what they look like, uh, and then I can take you along, you know, we'll look at the plugs and, and see what they look like. You know, hopefully they look good and I don't have to spend money on uh, spark plugs. All right, now the first thing you want to do is just remove this cover. It's just uh, two rubber grommets pull up on this thing. And then just slide it out of the way. Just two rubber grommets here to sit on these little plastic posts. Set that off to the side. And now what we'll do is we'll unplug these four coil packs here. Alrighty. Take some compressed air and we'll blow off a lot of that dirt there. This is why I love the Hemi engine over the LS's because spark plug replacement, just to get to the spark plugs to me is easier. You don't have to go in between a set of headers, They're just on the top where spark plugs are supposed to be. But move the coils. And then before we remove the plugs, we want to take some compressed air again, blow out each of these holes there, and uh, so that way there's no dirt that gets down into the engine. Grab yourself a cardboard box. Doesn't have to be decorated as fancy as this one, but Grab a cardboard box and pull out all eight spark plugs on the one side. Take the spark plug and just pop it into the box. <coughs> Alright, now we're just going to do that with the rest of the eight. So this is why you got the cardboard box, keeps your spark plugs organized as to what cylinder they came from. And all these plugs look decent. I mean, if they were cheaper, I probably would throw a fresh set in, but uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable and happy with the way those plugs look. Since we have them out, I'll check the spark plug gap, which is supposed to be 52 thousandths. So you just take a 22 and a 30 thousandths and just make sure that you've got 52 thousandths there gap. Now I already checked the rest of these plugs. They're all gapped at 52 thousandths, just like they're supposed to be. So these look good enough for now. Like I said, I didn't have any misfire. The plugs don't look burnt. Uh, if they were cheaper, I might, again, be inclined to throw a fresh set in. Now, one of my pet peeves is when people put spark plugs back in, they just take it and they drop it in the cylinder. Uh, what that can do is mess up the spark plug gap. So I myself like to either get a spark plug socket that has the little rubber insert in there, or just take a rubber hose and start the spark plug by hand instead of dropping that spark plug down in there and potentially messing up the spark plug's gap. But put that in, start that by hand. Now if you do have that rubber insert, you always wanna make sure that it comes back out after you're done putting the spark plug in. I have had where that rubber insert has stayed on the plug and it is very difficult to get that back off if it happens uh, to you. So as we finish this job up, just a word to the wise, always start all your bolts by hand. Hand tighten them first and then come back with the ratchet. Now none of this stuff needs to be too tight. Uh, spark plugs, you just want to make sure that they're snug. You don't want to strip a spark plug out. And when you put the coils back on, they're just a six millimeter bolt. So 
just as hand tight as you can get. Bust out the quarter inch uh, ratchets, that way you don't over tighten those and potentially snap a bolt off. Everything was going good until I got to this cylinder here, which I believe is cylinder number six. I'm sure you guys will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's cylinder number six. And I came across these spark plugs here. And they look a little trashed. The gap was still good, but the spark plug itself is a little trash looking. So, I bit the bullet. I went out and I got all 16 spark plugs. I'm just going to throw a fresh set in. I'll keep these as a spare in the event that I ever need them. But went out and got fresh spark plugs, so I'm going to put those in. I am going to keep an eye on this cylinder. After the dyno, I'm going to pull the plugs again and see what they look like. But um, I don't think there's anything wrong. Could have been anything a stuck injector i don't know so, something could have been going on in that cylinder you know at one point in time i'm not going to say that something's wrong because the plugs aren't actually melted down they just have some gunk on them so it is going to be something i'm keeping an eye on but all the plugs are getting replaced so that's what i'm going to do now it is late guys uh, I do still have to put all these eight in and I will have to go over to the other side and put all eight of those spark plugs in. I'm not going to record that because it's basically the same thing I just showed you. Uh, so that's going to do it for this video. Uh, next video that you see this car in, it will be going to the dyno. What do you guys think it will make power wise? Uh, if you made it to this far in the video. Drop a number down there what you think it'll make with the addition of the intake as well as the exhaust and the uh, 93 octane flash tune that I put in the car. I'm also going to try something with the intake. I'm going to take off the airbox lid there where those four screws are and do one run with that lid off. See if maybe it makes a difference. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. But um, as always guys... Thank you for leaving thumbs up on the video. Thank you for liking the videos and putting your comments, uh, sharing the videos. I really appreciate it. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the next upload. Time to make some power.